magic or miracles? What's the difference and how do you create either in your life? Hi, I'm Allie Bierman, your guide to demystifying your world, and you are listening to Let's Get Metaphysical, Connecting Heart and Mind. The difference between magic and miracles. When people are telling you that you need to set a goal and you need to have an intention and before you go into a meeting or whatever you're looking for in your life, you got to put it in great detail, minute detail of everything you want to have happen. Where are you in that picture of agreeing that the more intention, the clearer, the more specific you are, the more it's going to benefit you. Now, I have always been someone who sees things from a different perspective. And here's what I witnessed ages ago, okay? If you're setting a very specific goal, let's say for the person you want to attract as a partner or for a job that you want or for a place to live and you're being so specific, and you're describing the exact job you want, where you want it to be, what kind of perks you want to have in it, just the whole thing in great detail. You're telling the universe, give this to me because this is what I want. And the universe isn't judged. The universe gives you whatever you're requesting totally in the detail. But what you're missing out on. Let's say you've described job A, but the universe knows there is a way better opportunity for you in job B, but it can't deliver it to you because you've put out the request for job A. So you are limiting yourself. You are severely limiting yourself in choices by limiting what the universe can deliver to you. On the other hand, when you put out a more general feeling of what you're looking for, then you're allowing the universe to fulfill that general feeling in whatever detail is going to be best, be best for you. Now, let me give you some examples. Okay, years ago, more than 10 years ago, when I had a brain tumor and it was in a really, really dangerous place. And when I went to, I wanted a particular neurosurgeon and I was referred from that person he said no you want this surgeon instead so I'm reading the evaluations and people say oh but this guy has a terrible bedside manner so I didn't want him what a reason to not some, want somebody and thank goodness somebody else who also had a brain tumor that didn't need surgery she said let me help you with this and she contacted some other neurosurgeons because she'd been in that realm already for a while in her own self-care. She said, this guy is the number one best in the country at this particular surgery. This is how dangerous the location of it was. It was wrapped around my brain stem and going down into my first and second cervical vertebrae. Why is that so dangerous? Because if you make a mistake, if you make a slip in that area, you could wind up, well, dead. You could wind up paralyzed in many, many ways. Because what the neurosurgeon didn't tell me was there were nerves in there. And he said, well, you may wind up unable to swallow, unable to talk, unable to walk. He said, you may. He didn't say 
why that was a possibility. Anyway, who was this neurosurgeon? I was living in the Boise, Idaho area at the time. I was born in Brooklyn, New York. This surgeon moved his family from Brooklyn, New York to Boise, Idaho. So there he was, perfect for me. And when I talked to him, man, he couldn't have had a better bedside manner. He was incredible and he was generous. He answered all my questions. He talked to my brother. He talked to my daughter. He was so accommodating and he was so extraordinary. He prepared me. He said, this is a very delicate surgery and I may have to take, it normally takes 10 and a half hours, okay? And he said, in your case, I think we're going to have to do this in two days because I'm going to have to go in one day just to remove the tumor and then go in the next day to put everything in place so that you'll be able to function and then we'll be able to close up everything. Two days, 10 hours the first day, no mention of the possibility how long the second day. Well, guess what? And I put out a request to everybody who knew me. Please see the tumor sliding out as if it's on a nonstick surface and just slides right out easily and quickly. Okay. I guess that was a little bit detailed, but not in the detail that fit what actually happened. The surgery was done in four hours, not two days, not even 10 hours. The surgery was done in four hours. So here was what the universe did, moved this surgeon who was actually rated number one in the country for that very particular surgery. And he had moved cross country with his family because he wanted to raise his family in a different environment than East Coast. And there I was, an East Coast person living in the area. There are no coincidences, you know what I mean? Okay, so that's one example of miracle. I wasn't putting out something specific because I didn't know enough. Thank goodness I didn't know enough. And that gave the universe free reign to do what I needed. Because I couldn't possibly know what I needed. Now, when I had uh, my first grandchild, and my daughter needed some help with, with her. And I went out and visited and I, I love being with her. I love how she was teeny weeny and I loved holding her and singing her to sleep on my shoulder. Best feeling. And I said, hey, I wanna move back here. So that meant leaving Ida. I said, I'd never leave Ida. <laughs> I lived in the high desert. The climate was incredible. Anyway, I said, I want to move back to New York. I don't want to live in the city where you live, but I want to be, say, an hour, an hour and a half away. And that's all I said. Packed up my truck. My most amazing friend, who has all these extraordinary talents, drove my full truck, towing my car through bad snowstorms. Anyway, we made the trip. I did not have any place in mind of where I wanted to live. What I knew was I wanted to be in the country and I couldn't walk steps. Now that last part, I couldn't walk steps is really, really important. So I'm looking at all these houses. None of them were in the country. They were all horrible. And all my life, from the time I was little, I said, 
I don't care if I live in a shack. I just want to be in the country. Well, I think it was my daughter found this house and it was in the country across the oh, country, mountains, lakes. I don't like oceans, I like lakes. She finds this house, it's a little house and it bordered on the Appalachian Trail. I could go out my door and find six different entries to trails, Appalachian Trail. Did that answer my lifelong desire to live in the country? Yes. And to look out my window and across the street, there's a big, beautiful lake. However, there was this big catch. The only way to get into it was walking steps. And here's where a miracle came in. Not just the fact that I didn't know where I was moving into. And here happens the house at the location with the view that I really wanted. But there were these steps that I couldn't walk. Well, I really wanted to live there. And so what I did was I healed pretty instantly, okay? I could walk the steps. I had to walk them carefully and slowly at first, but I could do it because the universe knew what I wanted and gave me, gifted me, but I needed to be able to live where I always wanted to live. Now, the other side of that was <laughs> when I was little and I said, I don't care if I live in a shack, I just want to live by the land and the water. And the house was actually a bungalow, which is a step above shack. And I lived there for two years and it was just too darn small for me. So I went out looking again, not having any idea what I wanted, where I wanted, except again, I wanted to be in the country. And now I was able to walk steps. And oh my goodness, here comes a house. It's a two family house, separate accommodations, which means I didn't have to live there alone. And are you ready for this? This house has a big pond full of beautiful, beautiful fish. The yard is surrounded on, I guess it's three sides by woods. And what I get to enjoy out the window, actually where I'm sitting now, my office looks out. On the yard, I see deer. Sometimes I'll see a mountain lion. Sometimes I'll see foxes, wild turkeys, squirrels, of course, birds and all kinds of colors I never saw before, never heard of. Did that fill my heart? You better believe it. I was in the country, which is why I have challenges sometimes with my connection. So what? <laughs> when I didn't live in the country, I had challenges with connection, miracles again. And because this time, once again, I wasn't putting out the specifics. I was putting out the general goal in my life, in my world. And it made it easy for the universe to provide the miracle of the house. Oh, and as if that wasn't enough, the house is 15 minutes from the Omega Institute. If you're into anything spiritual, you know the Omega Institute, the greatest names in the world of spirituality, including the Dalai Lama, come to the Omega Institute to speak, to share, to teach. And because I live in the small town, the Omega Institute offers all kinds of freebie stuff to people who live in this beautiful small town. So I can go up there. 
I can be by the beautiful lake. I can use the kayaks and the canoes and go out on the beautiful lake or just enjoy being on one of the chaise lounges by the lake. You can go to all kinds of free talks there because the universe brought me to this place. Did I know when I saw this house and my heart went, oh, this is for me because I'm looking out the window and I see mountains. And I see all those magnificent animals and plants. When you don't limit the universe, you get to experience miracles. Or how about an experience that you're aware of in your own life? where you turn down perhaps, uh, well, let's say someone who is a potential partner. And there was something inside you that says, something's not jiving deep inside me and always honor, always honor that feeling that's deep inside you, always. And then, Oh my goodness, along came somebody whose energy matched with yours, matched with yours, not because you were fitting together each other's wounds, which is how almost all relationships start, which is why they don't last, but a person who actually loves, honors, and respects himself, herself, and therefore is free to love, honor, and respect you because you can't give what you don't have. Those are some very vivid experiences in my life. And, and what I wanted to mention to you today, if you've been following me in my life for the last 10 and a half years, you're probably aware. And my functioning's better. That my hair's getting dark again. That my speech is clear. And you know what else I can do? I can blow my nose. I couldn't do that for 10 years. And you know why? Because a friend showed me stem cell patches that are affordable, that have changed my life, that are finally allowing my body to recreate the nerves I lost in that surgery leading to all that paralysis. And I could tell you what a difference they might make for you. You gotta just contact me. Never, ever, ever, never, ever settle for hurting for struggling, whether it's physical or emotional, whether it's pain or is going on for you, struggle's optional. And you message me directly and I will talk with you about how to make your life happy again. Enjoy, remember that's I N capital J, oh, why every moment, because your life is an experience out there. It's experienced here in your mind, in your body. When you see something, you're not seeing it outside of you. You're seeing it inside. You're hearing it inside. You're tasting, touching, smelling inside you. So enjoy your life. And I want to remind you to join our Facebook group where you'll find all kinds of additional videos and special offers and just fun meeting other people. I will see you here next week. Oh, man, I have something that's super fun to share with you next week. And I'm not going to tell you what it is because I want you to come and you're going to be smiling and quite possibly even doing some laughing when you join us for my next guest. 
enjoy. I'll see you next time.